Welcome. Each week I do a statistical analysis of the data associated with the COVID-19 pandemic to see what the numbers are actually telling us rather than what we're being told they tell us. This week's subtitle is Optimistic Forecasts and covers the week ending the 3rd of May 2020. Let's start with a quick summary of the situation as it is currently. Worldwide we have 3.5 million cases with 1.2 million cases in the United States. The number of deaths is over 250,000, with 68,000 of those in the US. 227 countries have reported having COVID cases, and so COVID is now on all continents except Antarctica. The number of cases is still rising, yet some countries and states are lifting or easing their restrictions, which is probably way too early. We do have a few vaccines going to phase one testing, which is promising. And there are some medications that people are looking at to see whether they can ease the course of the disease. But it's unlikely that we will have an effective vaccine for at least a year and in any quantities much longer than that. Here's a map showing the distribution of cases around the globe. Now you'll see that compared with last week, a lot of countries have got a much darker color. That means they're getting more and more cases. Countries that have been particularly hard hit are the United States, Russia, Turkey, and Brazil. Where matters of concern are India, with cases are beginning to edge up, uh, and Saudi Arabia. And interestingly, Sweden has far more cases and far more deaths than the surrounding countries of a very similar nature. I've shown you this plot in previous presentations. The red line shows the number of cases as a function of time. Last week I predicted that we would pass 3 million by the end of April, and indeed we did. There seems to be no let up in this curve. It seems to be carrying on uh, in a straight line, and that is worrying. This, this curve should be turning over if we're starting to open things up, and it's not doing so. If we carry on on this particular trajectory, we will pass 5 million by the end of May. One thing I mentioned in one of my earliest videos on this subject was I noticed an oscillation in the data and I just thought that this was an interesting artifact. But it seems to be there even more pronouncedly over the last few weeks. Here you can see the peaks of those oscillations is present in both the US data, which is shown in green, and also in the other data shown in the yellow and gray. I have no idea of what's causing this, but the period is just under two weeks. Very, very interesting, but uh, again, I don't know what this says, but it may be of some relevance. Let's talk about lethality. Now, remember, I use two different measures of lethality. One is the standard one, which is the number of deaths divided by the number of confirmed cases. That's shown by the orange curve at the bottom, and at the moment is around about 7%. And the one that I think is more realistic uh, is the number of deaths divided by the number of resolved cases. Now you must remember here that we have still 2.2 million cases that are still pending, so we don't know how they'll re be resolved. Now, hopefully those will all recover without any further deaths, but that is very, very unlikely. In the meantime, the orange curve will continue to rise and the blue curve will continue to fall. And if we project those forward, when they come together, that should indicate the end of phase one. And that looks to be about the end of June if these figures keep on going this particular way. However, should there be a second wave or a change in the infection rate of this virus or the lethality of this virus, uh, these curves will change quite radically. And that's another thing we need to look out for in these particular data. I feel we've been having a number of very optimistic projections put out by the Trump administration recently. And I wanted to challenge some of those ideas with the actual data. This blue curve shows the number of cases in the United States uh, over the last few months. And you can see it's pretty much a straight line. And if that straight line continues, we'll be over 2 million by the end of May. Now let's take a look at the number of lethal cases. The Trump administration claimed on the 10th of April that if they did a really good job, they would keep it under 60,000 deaths. Now we're already over 60,000 deaths, uh, and so that is gone by the wayside. If this rate continues, and it looks pretty linear at the moment, we will be at over 
120,000 deaths by the end of May. Uh, and of course, if this premature opening increases the number of deaths, we'll beat that number earlier. Uh, hopefully, what will happen is the social distancing will continue to work and start to turn this curve over. But it hasn't done so yet, and that's the important factor. So on the 10th of April, they said 60,000 deaths. On the 28th of April, they were talking 74,000 deaths. On the 30th of April, they dropped it to 72,000 deaths. And today, I heard that they were talking over 100,000 deaths. I think this means they don't know what they're doing. The White House Task Force put out a set of criteria in order to reopen. And a lot of states are ignoring these criteria, which I think is very dangerous. There are five particular points. One, that you had to have 14 consecutive days of declining new cases and deaths. That you had a comprehensive testing plan in place. You had a tracking and isolation plan. And that a new outbreak would not stretch your hospital capacity. As far as I know, no states have met all these criteria as yet. Let's just take a look at the first criterion and see how many are meeting that one. I looked at the numbers state by state to see which states had their numbers increasing, stable or decreasing. And this is the states that I looked at so far. If there's a green arrow pointing down, it means the states had at least 14 days of continual declining numbers and so has met at least the first criterion. Not all the other ones, but just the first criterion. The ones with the blue horizontal arrows are ones that the numbers seem to be leveling off, but they've not had 14 days of continually dropping numbers as yet. The ones with the black vertical arrows are the ones that are still have their numbers increasing and so should not be opening as yet. So what should you do if you're in one of the states that have numbers that are increasing yet are starting to open? Well, so I would certainly stay at home even if your state says reopening. Don't go to restaurants, cinemas, clubs, sporting events or any other place where there are crowds or people in close contact. Practice social distancing and wear a mask when you're outside. And if you feel unwell, get a test, of course, assuming you can get one. So in the meantime, stay safe. And until next week, goodbye. As I was getting ready to post this video, I just heard on the TV that the White House has changed its estimate yet again to like 134,000 with an upper limit of 150,000. 